City strife. Horses, chicks, and dogs, they are my neighbors. I cook and some spin, and put the horses in to the barn, and time to move them out again. Red barns, green pastures, beautiful my houses. The view I see each day when I arrive. This life pleases me. It is plain to see I'm living my bucolic life. Well, welcome to the next project. And I have absolutely no idea how long this one's going to take me. Simplicity pattern. And I'm going to be making the longer version. It's basically a princess seamed coat with this really cool come on focus it's with this really cool thing that's like a hood but if you pull it down it's like a cape you know okay, I like so this that. is what my inner lining piece looks like now it is not going to overlap like the other one because remember we cut it from a narrower piece so like the other one has a big overlap this does not so it's actually fitting correctly just wanted to show you what it's looking like and now I'm going to go ahead and start working on the sleeves so I could sew the sleeves onto this piece. Okay so I need to mark these two dots um, so that I can run the gathering stitches up here. I am just going to pull my paper down just a tad because I am dealing with black here and doing just a couple of little if I can get my chalk to work for some reason. Chalk is not being cooperative. Um, run my two chalk lines. All right, now the back side has two notches in it, two notches here. So I know this is my back side. I'm gonna put my very light but awkward B on my back corner just so it's easy for me to see. Now I should have a notch up here at the top. I'm going to go ahead and make a line through that too right now so it'll be easier for me to see when I match up. So I'm going to do this on both of them. Run two rows of gathering stitches just like I did for the green part. Uh, one at half inch, one at about a quarter to three eighths of an inch up here. And uh, then we will put the side seam together. All right, so this is what my sleeves look like now. I have the seam put together. Remember to ease in that little extra part at the elbow there. I've got both strands of my gathering stitches in. I didn't use my super duper thread on this, just for standard all-purpose thread because it's just regular fabric. Um, I'm not trying to gather the uh, upholstery fabric. So this is this will work fine. I'm going to do like I did last time which is to go ahead and pull my bobbin threads which are on the lining side of this one and press this at my ironing board to try to form a sleeve head in it before I start to sew it into my lining piece. Okay so I've got my sleeve cap kind of sort of shaped up here. I'm going to go ahead and put it on. This is my back side. It's got two notches. I can see my chalk inside. My front side has one notch. So I'm going to put that there and match up the right armhole that goes with it and match up this underarm seam here. And I'm just going to do this exactly like I did the green one where I start at the bottom and do the top. Now I am not planning on back stitching this in. Let me get it all pinned, see how it looks, and I'll take it from there. So as I pin this in, I'm thinking that it's not as critical to me that there are no puckers or things like that when I'm sewing on this lining seam. No one's ever gonna see it. So I'm just gonna sew it in by machine. I'm not gonna put it in by hand first and just do the standard 5 8 7 inch I mean sorry 5 8 inch seam allowance all the way around and then just like I did the other one come back about an eighth of an inch in and do a second round and just like the other one 
trim that area along the bottom of the sleeve. Okay, so I've got this one sleeve sewed on. So you can see I've got two rows of stitching going around. And then this bottom part here, or kind of between the two notches, I just trim that down lower so it's closer to this second row of stitching. All right, so now is the time when we're going to start to attach the lining to the jacket. So I've got my jacket, one side of it opened up here, and I am placing my lining right sides down along the jacket here. Now the lining edge is going to be shorter than the jacket by about an inch. So let me go ahead and pin it starting matching the tops up here and all the way down. So I'm going to need to sew up this edge at 5 8 of an inch, but I start right here. I start because there's an inch from here to here and an inch from here to here. And they want you to start sewing an inch above this, which is the lining up to right about where the edge of my um, lining quilted part is. So I'm gonna go ahead and start and sew from here all the way up and do it on the other side too so that I have my lining connected on both sides of my uh, front of my jacket. Okay, so for the next step, um, I've got a little bit of an issue, but it's not that bad of a deal because it is a hem and hems are flexible. But what happened is when I got done sewing both of my fronts, um, I am half an inch too low. And I tried taking it off and re-sewing it and easing all this was just a little bit too much. So I am just going to go with a one inch hem instead of a one and a half inch hem. That's I think that's the easiest thing at this point. So with that on each side, and this is the side that has the zipper over here I'm looking at right now. They're both kind of done the same way. Remember I have this two inch wide interfacing here. So I'm just going to pull this out nice and flat. Get this paper out of the way here. And I need the seam allowance to be going towards the center of the jacket. So let me just go ahead and stick a clip over here just so it's going to stay where I want it to stay for right now because this is adding a lot of weight and bulk but you know what that's what I wanted. I wanted a nice heavy coat so. <clears throat> okay so for this next step um, whatever I do here, I'm going to do the same thing for the opposite side. Now I've decided that I'm making my hem half an inch shorter than what is on the pattern. And that is simply because once I got done sewing this on, this came down a half an inch longer than what they call for. And the easiest fix for me is just to lower the hem, if that makes any sense. Anyhow, this is that piece of interfacing on the front. This is the seam I just made right here, okay? So what I've done is draw a line. I'm going to make my hem one inch. So half an inch bigger than that is what I'm measuring here. Drawing a line straight across this interfacing and the seam allowance, okay? Then I'm going to come in here and clip the green part, the fashion fabric part of that seam allowance, not the lining. The lining I'm leaving. Remember we left the bottom part of the lining open. It's for this reason. Then I'm folding back the seam allowance of what I just clipped. I'm going to get this lining out of the way here. And let me put a couple clips over here just to hold it in place. And what I need to do now is make another line that's going to be my stitching line. Actually, let me move this again. At one inch. One inch is going to be my finished hem. So that's what this line is going to be. Whatever your finished hem is going to be. Okay. So here it is at one inch. Let me put this clip back. And I need to sew just from, get this camera down here. Okay, so I'm going to be sewing just from this point here where I folded back the seam allowance, keeping this out of the way, 
straight across to this point. And I'm going to do the same thing on both sides. All right, so I have it sewed. So what I need to do now is do some trimming. And the first thing I'm going to do is come up here and trim that big corner off. Then moving my lining out of the way, get my scissors in here and cut this front section down to fat eighth skinny quarter inch, you know. And then up here where the seam allowance ends that we just stitched down, it wants you to trim straight up at that point and then cut the rest of this off. And I'm just making that little piece slightly longer. Now I was looking at the instructions and I saw something. Um, remember I said the very front piece, the lining section was shorter? Well it looks like they want the entire lining piece to be this same height, okay? The same length. They don't say it anywhere on the pattern that I could see that I could see, could be wrong, and I can't find it in the instructions, but it makes sense based on how they're constructing it that that would be the case. So I am going to go ahead right now, and now that I know this, if I had known this before, I would have trimmed it off ahead of time, and trim off an inch from the bottom of all of this face of this lining down here so it's going to be nice and level at this level all the way around the bottom and since it's like an inch shorter I'm just you know quickly quickly just putting a few guideline marks so I have something to aim at as I'm cutting so I can get it somewhat straight as I go and just got those marks down there and I'm just gonna cut across and follow them Okay, so this is how the hem's going to go. We have this little part here done already. This is the lining seam allowance that's folded that way. So now we need to stitch, starting right here, just the lining seam allowance folded, you know, in line with the stitch that we already made. And butt the two ends up all the way around. Now because the lining piece is shorter, it should be shorter, than the other one. Um, it should give us a nice turn at the edge. So change of plan here about the hem. I'm going to do mine differently. I, th what they want you to do is make it like a big bag and then pull everything right side out through the neckline. If I'm looking at my coat, I don't think there's any way I'm going to get all of this quiltedness and everything through that neckline without distorting it. And with the quilted bottom of my garment here, I think that I'm going to run into a problem. I actually think, looking at this, that on my bottom I should have cut my quilted part at least two inches higher. Okay, I made my quilted part two inches above the bottom of the pattern. Okay, well now that I've trimmed the pattern up an inch and doing it their way with my quiltedness. And sometimes, you know, as you work through things, you figure it out. That's going to have me folding up the quilted part, which is what I didn't want because that adds a lot of extra bulk. Okay. So I'm going to do my hem differently so that I only have to fold this up that much. I'll show you when I get to that point. So just be aware, I'm going to be flipping it right side out and then hemming it um, after I flip it. Okay, so this thing is getting very big. So I have just flipped it right side out. So these two seams are the ones that I just sewed. They are together. I'm thinking that I want to go ahead and press these in the right place. And remember on that front line when I was putting the zipper in here? Well, you can't see it very well right now, but there was a line I drew um, that I placed the zipper teeth half an inch from. Okay, this is a fold line. It is about an inch and three quarters from this seam, all right? and that lines up with this corner down here that we just flipped 
that's where we did all that stitching and trimming and everything and flipped it right side out. So I am going to go and very gently press this, you know, with my towel and my steam and just patting and all of that kind of stuff, just to kind of give it the idea of where it wants to go. Cause I can't really put pins in to hold it. And I can't really put clips on to hold it. So just to, to let it get used to where it's supposed to go. I think that before I start dealing with the sleeves, I really want to get this other side of the zipper put in. It's kind of bothering me that it's still hanging around out here. So um, I'm looking at the instructions here and we're going to be sewing it onto the left side on the outside of the garment. So that would be this one over here. Give me a second. Let me get it all situated. All right. So this is the one I already sewed on. It's going to be the one that goes on top. The one we're going to put on now is going to be on the bottom. Okay and I'm just holding it up here to make sure that if I line up the top of my tape at the same place that this tape is, that I can get it to come to the bottom of my coat at the same place that this one does, and I can. Um, <clears throat> what they're gonna want you to do is when you sew it on, you know, sew it on like right out here, fold this top part over and stitch it up here. We'll, we'll take it one step at a time here. The first thing I'm going to need to do is, of course, put my tape on, but I want to measure exactly where I'm going to be placing this first. Okay, so this is that front edge that I just ironed, and um, the edge here is lining up with the edge of that interfacing. So where the interfacing on the inside ends is where this fold line is. All right, so I am going to be needing to place my zipper with the teeth facing away from the edge, but they want me to put it so that the edge of my tape is half an inch from this edge. Okay, so I'm gonna draw a line at half an inch so that I have that guide to uh, line my edge of my zipper tape up. So let me go ahead and finish drawing this across here. I had to break out a new roll of tape. I used up the last of the other one. There's different brands. This is just the brand I'm using this time. You know, there's different brands of this stuff out there. Help yourself. So I'm going to be sewing my my zipper on this way. Now, they're going to have you, after you stitch it on, flip this this way. So I want to make sure when I put my tape on, I'm putting it as close to this outside edge as possible. Okay. And so if I lay it on here, I can see which side my tape needs to be on. It's going to be on this side right here. So I'm just going to flip that upwards here so I can make sure I have the right one. All right, so I have my tape stuck very as close as I can to the outside edge of my zipper here. And now I'm going to go ahead and peel that paper backing off of the tape. All right, so I got my paper pulled off the back of my tape. Now making sure that you're putting the end with the stopper that goes at the bottom on the right side. I'm flipping it over so my tape is down. And I think I'm going to start it up here at the top. See if I can get the camera over there. I need to line up the very top of my tape with the top of my fabric up here at that one half inch mark. I'm going to go down about halfway, lining it up with that half inch mark that I drew. I don't know if you can see it, but it's right here. Okay, now that I get about halfway, I'm going to stop and come down here to the bottom. And I need to make sure that the bottom of the zipper is the same distance from the bottom of the coat as this zipper. Okay, so if this is to set in there, just letting for demonstration purposes, I'm going to want right there at this level, okay? 
So I'm going to scoot it over there, pull that side off. And now I'm just going to try to kind of split the difference between this point on the bottom and all of this up here at the top. It might take me a minute because we have a lot to, to squish in. Now this is going to be underneath. So if it looks like I'm working a little bit of ease in, it feels like I'm working a little bit of ease in. But I don't think that that's going to be a big problem. The main thing is that the top and the bottom are aligned. Okay, so now that I have that, I've got it all pressed down so it's going to be secure. I need to come back and stitch this along the guideline on my zipper tape, which is right about here. And I'm going to zip stitch that all the way down. Okay, so I got it sewed on. I just zipped it up to test it. Everything is good. It zips up well. Um, but before I can call the zipper time done, what I need to do is fold this whole part. This is the zipper we just sewed on in half this way so that now the teeth are lining up with the edge here. And I need to up here, kind of where the stay stitching line is, um, put a basting stitch across there just to hold it in that direction. Okay, so there you go. That's what it looks like. I just put a couple stitches there to hold it. Um, I want to go ahead and just kind of press this that way, but I don't want to risk it. You know what I mean with my iron? And you can kind of see even with just the teeth laying that way for a minute. It wants to do that finicky child. Anyhow, on the other side, the right front side that we put the zipper on ages ago, I need to run a row of top stitching now. Sorry, this thing is getting massively large and heavy. Um, I need to run a row of top stitching on this side over here. First, I want to go inside here though and make sure that the seam allowances behind here are all going towards the coat and not towards the outside. So I've got those placed. You can kind of see the ridge of where they are. That is where this seam is here. I need to do my top stitching at an inch and a half in from the outside edge. So again, I am just going to get my ruler and just start marking a line at that inch and a half and I'll go over to my machine and stitch that on and that's going to help this whole front section to lie flat. Okay, so this is her right now. I have it zipped up. I've got plenty of ease, plenty of room, and I cut it out larger than normal just to give myself plenty of room because, you know, who wants a super tight coat? This is my zipper. I did lightly press this one so that it would want to roll with its teeth towards the center there, but it's pretty. Pretty substantial there. Here's the back. It's nice smooth princess seams and everything. I have not dealt with the lining in the sleeves yet. This is still just nice and raw, but I think it's coming together really well. All right, I'm going to try to follow their directions for the sleeve hem. Kind of looks like origami, but um, one thing is they want me to pull it through the neck hole. I'm going to be pulling it through underneath because I just have more room there. So I need to reach in here and get to where my two sleeves are. So the first step is to get the underarm seam of both my lining and my sleeve, match those up, and I need to tack them together. So while I get my needle and thread together, I'm just gonna clip these in the seam allowance up here so I won't lose track of what that is. So I've got my needle and thread and I am going to be working in between these two different rows of stitching that I did and just take a few tack kind of threads back and forth a few times. Let me get these clips out of here now just to hold it in place. 
nothing fancy and I will be doing this to both sides both sleeves all right so the instructions are saying at this point while I'm inside out like this it wants me to sew these right sides together my the ends of my sleeves right sides together so I guess I just kind of awkwardly but carefully matching up that underarm seam and over here and I will just carefully work it under my machine like that all the way around. Let me go ahead and clip it first. It wants me to stitch this at a half inch seam. I can tell you this, this stuff is so thick I am going to go ahead and trim out uh, probably about a height of about three quarter inches here in my seam allowance so it's going to be cut out like that um, not out of my lining just out of this fabric and I think that it will work a lot better for me so let me go ahead and finish matching these up I'm not sure that I remember doing sleeves like this before so this is new I am just kind of working my way around getting the edges together and clipping it like so, so that the raw edges line up like this. Okay, so now I'm going to go to my sewing machine and carefully stitch this at a half inch seam allowance. All right, so now that these two are sewn together, remember this basted line that we put in a long time ago to mark the hemline of the jacket? I need to turn it. It's kind of hard to see, but I can kind of look in here and see that where I'm folding it, the green fabric is at that line, okay? And when I do that, I'm going to have these seam allowances coming together at this point. I'm just going to stick a little clip there for one second. I'm going to get my needle and thread and just tack through the seam allowances um, the lining to my fashion fabric right here. So I'm just going to stitch up through here. I don't want my needle to go all the way through to the visible side, but I'm going to make several large and ugly stitches here in the seam allowance on both sides. So now that I have that done, I'm going to try to turn this whole thing right side out and you kind of have to reach inside the armhole and pull that sleeve out from the inside. Okay, and the lining's just gonna follow along in there. Hopefully, make sure you don't stitch this all together with your sleeves somewhat twisted, because that could be bad. So, now that I'm pulling it out, like this, I should have my basted line somewhat near the edge. All right, this is going to have enough ease that it can fold down like that if it wants to. I'm not really gonna worry too much about making sure this is a perfect fold because it's on the inside. I am gonna go ahead and take these basting threads out. I don't believe I need them anymore. Now that the basting threads are out, I'm going to go over and press this lightly so it's going to want to hold its little edge where I want it to stay. All right, I'm going to start tackling this bottom hem now. And like I said, I'm doing it totally different than the instructions call for. So what I'm going to be doing is, get this down here. I'm going to fold it under at the point where my lining is, okay? and make that the edge of my lining. I am not going to be attaching this to my coat um, at fully all the way across the bottom. To make sure that I have a nice edge here, uh, I'm just gonna fold it under, fold it under in the back so it ends up with like a hem that looks like this, basically. And I'm just gonna machine stitch it across there all the way across the bottom. All right, so at this point, this is how my hem is laying. My lining is about an inch above just the cut raw edge here. How I'm gonna be finishing my bottom hem 
is with wide hem binding. Get my hem binding here and I'm going to open it up so I have a raw edge up here and it's going to be up against the raw edge of my jacket. And I'm going to st stitch right here where this crease is about a quarter inch in. It's going to be a very small seam allowance right there. I will be under stitching so it rolls nicely, but I want to try to retain as much of this length as I can. So I got over to my sewing machine, was getting ready to sew that uh, hem tape on, and I realized it is just way too old. I love vintage things, but it was just so old that it was going to fall apart probably the first time it got tugged on. And so I just, you know, grabbed some wigging. And what wigging is, I have a roll of it here. It's actually supposed to be for um, stabilizing structural things, interfacing, things like that. But it's basically a very starched, biased cut muslin. Okay. And so for my purpose, it would be fine. Plus, because it is white, I was thinking that it would kind of blend with the lining up here. Like so. Like that. Um, I can tell at this point in the day I'm getting a little bit tired and I don't want to make any really big mistakes. So I think that once I get, I couldn't get my sewing machine all the way to the end. So once I get my ends tacked on by hand here, I think I'm gonna call it a day. Good morning. It's next day. And I think we're ready to finish this project today. Um, but I wanted to touch on something that just really sticks with me and I thought, well, maybe this will help someone else. Uh, last night when I was working on the hem of my coat, I just felt not that anything was wrong or anything had gone terribly bad, but I just did not feel inspired or joyful while I was sewing anymore. And to me, that's a key to stop. Because as soon as it seems like I'm pushing my sewing or I'm just going to be a good soldier and trudge through this and the joy is not in it, usually I will get frustrated and start taking shortcuts or make mistakes that I wouldn't normally. And then um, I live to regret it. It takes more time to undo it. Either I undo it and do it right later, which takes time, or I don't. And then every time I look at that part of that project, it makes me frustrated. So I just wanted to say, sometimes I wasn't physically exhausted, but I just, that little enlightened joy had gone from the room at that point. And it's like, you know what, it's time to stop, regroup. Had a lovely evening downstairs and everything. And so, you know, I'm ready to get back into it. You might notice I got bell going on down here in the background. Um, one thing that happened over the last couple days is I think you saw the video where I changed the motor on my Meister. Well, when I started sewing this coat, I realized that the motor I put on it was not as strong as the motor I had on before. So, um, midway in the middle of the night, I came up and I'm, you know, moving motors around again. And I took the motor that I had put on the Meister and I put it back here on my decoupage machine. And, um, then I took the rebuilt motor that I originally had on there, switched it all back. And yesterday, and I, and I had been working on it for actually the last couple, the last, uh, yesterday, all day yesterday, I worked on my old refurbished motor. And then last night it was starting to go again. And I think there's something deeper than just the brushes wrong with that motor. So I have ordered, you know, a stronger motor to replace that. Um, so I had that going on. I've got my backup bell who I love dearly over here. She's beautiful. Um, and I haven't used her for a couple months, so I like to rotate them and keep them in use and everything. So I was, you know, got things going on in my room, so I'm a little bit out of my pattern and everything, and I think that probably contributed to that gut feeling of, no, it's not quite right. But 
in the morning everything is new and now I am ready to get started I think it's like seven o'clock in the morning but it's still kind of dark out there so I'm going to pull my big coat back down here and we are going to finish that hem so I wanted to show you I last night flip my lining interlining out of the way here um, last night what I did before I went downstairs is I just turned the raw edge underneath so I have you know probably about five eighths of an inch visible up here and what that's going to do is encapsulate the raw edge of my fabric so that I can just hem it on this way and this is so thick that um, if I was to you know fold it under on itself and everything I think that would give a ridge and it would make the hem hang not quite so well now I can tell you this um, it I still have seam allowance in here that's going to bother me so in general this is what I'm going to be doing um, I'm going to be folding this because I'm my hem is actually going to be about an inch lower than what the pattern calls for and that's all just because all of this you know modification here is just because of the length that I cut my interlining piece if I had cut my interlining piece you know a couple inches higher I would be able to go with the standard hem but because this is lower and I didn't feel like undoing all this to shorten it um, but because this is lower this needs to be lower and because this needs to be lower I don't have enough fabric to make an I don't have enough fabric to make a high hem this way so you know we do what we can do and adding a little something extra to the top will take care of that so all that being said what I'm going to be doing is having about half an inch of this green visible down here all right um, I think that if I had some emerald green lining fabric that would be perfect to put across here and make a tape out of but I don't and I don't want to mix a different color in there at this point so that's why I'm doing what I'm doing here so what I need to do though because there's a lot of thickness right here with my little pin at the seam allowance I'm just drawing a line kind of where the top of this is going to come to and then below that I'm going to clip out some of this so about half an inch or so below that mark I'm going to clip it in come in here and clip out some of this bulk all right I'll do it to both sides but what that's going to do is make this a lot thinner so that my seam allowances aren't going to stick out because they're so bulky so first thing I'm going to do is go all the way around to every seam allowance and clip that I will be doing both sides see if I can do this sideways here for the camera you know um, probably would have been better to do this before I sewed the wig in on but that's okay not a big deal so if you can see now there's not so much bulk so when I fold it up this is going to lay a lot flatter that's the whole purpose of this so let me go ahead and do that at the different seam allowances all right so I've got it all trimmed repinned and I I actually pinned it a little nervous about that but I'm going to run over to my ironing board and try to you know do my steamy pressy thing and try to get this all nice and flat here so I can sew it on my machine all right I got the hem done and I'll show it to you in just a second but I'm at a quandary here because the only thing really left to do is this big hood which is you know very dramatic and like I said before I will probably always have it down you know I will rarely do you know elf walks through the woods kind of hood up here but at this point the shoulders and everything at the top of my jacket look so nice and so defined it's almost a shame to cover them up and so I was playing with the idea of if I could make this hood detachable um, but looking at this and everything I think it would actually cause more trouble then it's worth at this point so I am going to permanently attach this big 
hood cape thing up on top, but I'm going to show it to you really quick so you can see what it looks like before it's all camouflaged. So this is her. Look at these shoulders. Even though I don't have like a sleeve head, padding, shoulder pads or anything, got really nice to find shoulders on here. And I think it's beautiful. And I tried it on and I saw on my post when I was, you know, saying this was my next thing that someone said I would, I want it longer. This, I mean, I extended the hem an inch longer than the pattern calls for. With that understanding, it's just a couple inches above my knees. So it's still fairly long, but I just wanted to show you really nice shape up here. If you wanted to make this coat without the hood, um, just change the way that you do the neckline up here. And I think that it would be really lovely. You know, maybe put a facing or something. I haven't thought that through yet, but very doable. But since I have that huge hood cut out, and that's the main iconic feature of this design, I'm going to go ahead and work on that right now. All right, so I have two of these very big hood pieces that are cut on a fold. And I wanted to show you the very first thing they want you to do is interface the entire thing. I am not going to do that because my fabric is substantial and dense enough that it's going to be fine. Um, if it was a, a looser weave or something like that, yeah, I probably would. But I do want this to be able to have some kind of movement and drape and everything like that. And I'm concerned that if I interface something that's already this, you know, tough, see if you can see, this is the back side, here's the front side, um, that it would give it too much stiffness around that, that cape look. So I'm not going to be doing that. So take this little clip off here. I need to put them right sides together. So let me go ahead and do that. See these little marks where my clip was? Good thing it was in the seam allowance, huh? Okay, so I have it, you know, lightly clipped together around this big curved edge. And there are a few circles on the pattern that I need to mark. So let me go ahead and get this lined up over here. We have a, a circle out here towards the edge, one here and one over here. I'm also going to be clipping it and putting a line. Well, you can't really see. There's a clip here I'm gonna come back, but I'm also gonna draw a line where that center back point is, just because that is always very handy. Okay, so the pattern wants me to do some clipping and trimming and things up here. I'm actually gonna sew this seam first, just so I can make sure that these two pieces are gonna stay together well um, before I do all of this stuff, okay? So what I need to do is sew this outside edge, and I believe it is just the outside edge, yes at a 5 8 inch seam allowance, and then I'm going to be understitching it. So I've got it sewed. I need to understitch it, but before I do that, I need to trim or clip or something this edge because that's gonna make it really bulky if I leave it out and about like that. When I understitch it, I'm gonna be um, pulling it to the side that I have not marked over here. And you can see that's gonna be a lot of bulk right there. So this is the way I'm gonna be trimming it. I'm gonna be understitching it so that this comes over this way, okay? So what I'm gonna do is take the, the layer that's gonna be folded over the most, I guess, the inside layer. I am trimming that one shorter. I've got about a quarter inch there, just pinking it down. The next layer I am leaving about an eighth of an inch longer, okay? Um, just so that I have a little bit of grading there. Honestly, looking at it, they're probably going to even up as soon as I fold it, just because this is so thick. But yeah, they're just going to, they're going to even up as soon as I fold it. So to me, that means I'm going to go ahead and trim both of them shorter. Because at that point, it's like layering your hair. If they're both the same length, when they fold over, they'll be at different levels. 
So like this, they are slightly staggered lengths now. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to trim both both sides of the seam allowance fairly short to within like about a quarter inch all the way around with my pinking shears. That should give it enough flexibility that I don't have to worry about notching it and everything and give it a nice finish. All right, so got that done. A little tough on the old hand, but got it all trimmed. So now I need to fold it out. Okay, so I am going to be understitching this now. So I have it nice and open. And this is the side that I have my little pen marks on. So I'm going to be pushing these towards the opposite side, which is going to become my underneath. You know, the understitching is always done on the private side, which in the case of this hood is the underneath part of that cape. Okay, which ironically will be the outside, but you know, whatever. So I'm going to be pushing it over this way and running a row of stitching right about here, about an eighth of an inch, this side of this seam, all the way down, just kind of working my way through. I'm going to look at this side. That way I can make sure that it's going to stay looking pretty on the outside. I think that that's a little bit more important to me, but I can kind of feel underneath with my hands to pull and make sure that that seam allowance is going the right direction. Okay, so this is what my understitching looks like on the edge here, which is going to help it have a nice edge. Okay. But before I can turn it right side out, I need to sew a little bit up here on the top. So the side that the understitching is on, it just kind of rolls that way. So I want to make sure I'm folding it nice and flat that way. And there was a dot. Where am I? Here it is. This is the dot that I'm looking for. I'm going to go ahead and clip up this side right here just so nothing wants to move i'm going to put another clip over here where my dot is i'm going to do the same thing on the opposite side and i need to sew straight across here at five eight seven inch and i just realized some of you might not have ever seen my little belvedere machine before it's an Adler Belvedere machine. It's a little Japanese machine from like a mid-century. I don't even know exactly, 50s, 60s something. But she's sweet. I actually have my handy dandy chopstick holding my thread on right now because somewhere along the way I lost the little screw in post that the thread pops onto and it's not the standard size that I can just grab it out of another machine. So for right now the chopstick is working, but she's a sweet little machine, just a little straight stitch machine, nothing fancy, but she's got a, a nice little motor on her and she does really well. So I just wanted to introduce you to Belle if you haven't seen her before. Okay, so this is my seam here up to that dot. What I need to do is I'm going to trim this corner kind of at an angle lots of bulk there and then trim this up to the end of my stitching Ugh, so thick and then come down towards my dot and cut off that bit so now I have a very narrow piece down here in this corner which I should be able to turn so Give me a minute. I'm going to try to flip this whole thing right side out. All right, so I got it all turned, lightly steamed and pressed. I've got my points out as far as they're going to go. There's, you know, it's very thick fabric and I didn't want to risk punching anything through. So I think that that's good enough. Now I need to deal with this um, part here in the middle before I go any further. <clears throat> so remember there's... In the very center, there's a couple notches, and then the next two dots, what I need to do is put a row of stitching starting one inch on this side of this dot, come all the way through to an inch past this dot at five eighths of an inch straight across there. All right, I'm not sure if you can see, but I have a row of stitching coming here right through the dot, and what I need to do is clip up to that stitching line, but not through it, at both of these sides. Okay, and then I need to fold this down so the stitching line is at the very top of the fold, like this. 
I'm going to go to my ironing board and do that. And once I have it uh, pressed so I think it's going to hold its shape, I'm going to come back and trim this seam allowance to about a quarter inch. Okay, so finally we're going to be attaching this to my neck. And this can get a little bit cumbersome, so just bear with me as I try to organize my life here. Um, I am thinking that it might be a good idea to just really quickly hand baste the lining to my top fabric here just to get it acting as a single unit before I go to the uh, extra confusion of sewing this on. So give me a minute. I'm just going to get needle and thread, hand base this together so it all matches up. All right, so this is the neckline of my jacket. I have basted the lining to the jacket so it's going to behave now. I'm feeling positive about that. And I'm going to take the side of my cape hood thing. I can see the notches here that are going to match up. The side that has the little clipped and folded part, that is not getting sewn on, obviously. But I'm going to go ahead and match up and um, all the way across here. This point here should line up with the end of my jacket. So what I'm doing is matching the centers and then skipping over here to the end, <clears throat> matching the end up, got a little overshot it there just a hair. This thing's getting rather bulky and large, but that's okay. All right, so I got that. There was not a dot on my little cape that matched up with a shoulder seam, which is odd, usually there is. So I'm just gonna assume that everything's gonna work its way together and it looks like it will. So I'll just go ahead and put my little clips all the way across here and then come back carefully, put this on my sewing machine and make a seam at five eighths of an inch all the way across. This is becoming very heavy, just so you know, but I was able to sew it on all the way across here. I think it's went fairly smoothly. Okay, all the way around. The part that is folded under is going to match up between the shoulder seams like this, okay? So what we're going to be doing is flipping this around and by machine sewing on these sides to the front. So what I need to do is kind of pull my hood inside out-ish again and at the edge here where we just sewed that. Close up. See, this is how it was. I'm just wrapping this side around here. Let me put a clip up here at the top. And then I'm going to wrap this edge around so that where this clip is here, that's where we folded and trimmed, you know, where this is is going to match up with the shoulder seam. And I just need to line that up and put another clip here. And I think I'm just going to do this one side at a time here. Um, put a couple more clips here just to hold everything in place. And let's see. Okay. I think that's enough. I don't know if you can see how many layers of very, very thick home deck fabric I've got going here, but it's, it's pretty thick there. So what I need to do is stitch this little part right here by machine, and I'm gonna do one half and then go back and do the same thing to the opposite side. When I stitch it, I'm gonna be running, this is the seam I just made, I'm gonna be running it just barely to the inside of it you know, so if this is at five eighths, just, you know, maybe a sixteenth of an inch inside. I would just rather have it slightly this way than that way. That way it won't interfere with the seam line um, that's on the outside edge. So, you go ahead back to the sewing machine again. And you know what, since I'm going to be looking at it from this side, I'm going to go ahead and make a little mark here that that is where I need to stop. So I'm going to sew from here out to the edge 
and I'll do this on both sides. Heads up, it is a lot more difficult to do the second side because all of a sudden you have very little room to work in. So it's kind of like making a really bizarre burrito up here, but it's coming together well, so just be patient with it. Okay, let me see if I can undo this somehow. Like I said, the second half was a lot tighter and more difficult than the first half. So just looking from the outside, it still looks okay. Let me shake this out. All right, so now this is looking at the inside of the collar. As you can see it's sewn up to the shoulder seams. This last bit, I am just gonna turn under, pin it, and uh, whip stitch it down. And that should not take that much, just between these two points right here, straight across. Okay, so here she is. Now there was one more step in the directions and they wanted you to put like a snap on here so these two can snap together. I'm not going to do that. Um, I kind of like it where I can open it up freely and I think that this fabric has enough body to it that it's just going to naturally kind of let one overlap the other in a organic kind of way. But you can see how it's going to make this collar and I'm going to call this a collar. I am not going to call it a hood because structurally it just doesn't look like a hood to me. Maybe for the as you walk down the runway type hood, but not for a reality real life. But look at this, it gives a very dramatic collar and everything. So I'm really happy with that. I think it's beautiful. So got it all done, ready to try it on. Just thought I would point that out and show it to you. Here it is in the back. Very nice. Okie dokie, it is done. It is super cozy and I like the collar being up this high. Today is actually very warm. Everything is melted so it's just mud everywhere. The horses are covered with mud. It's just mud. But yeah, it's very muddy out right now because it warmed up and everything is melting. But when it's very cold out, it's really nice to have something around your neck. And I think that this high collar is just going to break that breeze or whatever might come and then you can pluff it up even more and look very dramatic so I like it now you can see down here at the bottom or at least I hope you can it's very wide so there's plenty of room to sit down you know sometimes when you have a long coat and you get in your car to sit down and drive all of a sudden you're all confined and everything I don't think that's going to be the case with this now my knees are right here so this is actually fairly long it's just, it's down to my knees. And so it's very, I think it's very usable. I love it. I am just gonna use it. I'm not gonna save it for special occasions. I'm just gonna make every time I leave the house a special occasion because why not at this point really, you know, why not? And instead of using a snap, you know, I have so many pins that I just never use for anything. I thought, well, this is the perfect thing, the perfect place to use them. So I just stuck a little, fancy pin right there but I love it I love it I hope you uh, enjoyed the video got something out of it see you next time bye bye but um, when it's really cold out it's really nice to have hold on Myself. 
Ugh, that cat. That cat is a menace. Look at me, I'm dropping everything. Okay, I'll just hold this here. Let's say hi. Say bye-bye. Bye-bye.